Hello and welcome to the LDM show. I hope you guys had a good week. Uh, even though last week was raining like crazy, but hope you guys are uh, doing better. I got my boy here, Will Davis from XY 101. Uh, and we, you know, we're gonna kick in. So, but before we do that, you know, how was your week? How was it? It's it's been a busy week. Um, just mostly getting ready for my trip. That's all. That's it. That's that's yeah. I'm, I'm about to leave the country for ten days. So. Oh my god! This no, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, lucky boy, boy. He's so lucky, right? I guess to go out. And, where, where y'all go? Well, not for the people that do home state vacations. I uh, like staycations. They cheat. Nah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, I can't, I can't argue with that. They, they, it is cheap, you know. But talking about tell your job, yeah, I'm gonna take a vacation. Where you going to the living room? <laughs> I mean, yo, so, sometimes you know you need a week off of work, and it's called a vacation because of them. But you're really handling stuff here, you know, and and, and you just need the time away from work because you can't call out three out of five days, so you just take the whole week. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's good though. You got what uh, a week and a couple of days left. You leave what, the 19th, right? Yeah, yeah, I leave, I yeah, leave the 19th. Look at that, he's so lucky. But, so, you know, I, I think uh, my niece and my nephew, they should be coming for a bit the weekend beforehand, so I'll see them be, when they visit from Boston, then I'll go out to Curacao for a while, mm -hmm. and then start job hunting again next month. <laughs> yeah, but in, in that word, of course, we're being busy. Uh, look out soon, we're, we're doing uh, casting calls for a couple of things, so... Yes. Uh, still rubbing up getting sponsors for our game show that's going to be kind of cool uh, you know thinking about it all the time like that's going to be a little different for us <laughs> you know when we have to work different camera angles and you know hosting hosting it and well, doing all it's that. not so different it's just the first time we're doing it in studio because we've yeah. done the game show thing before yeah, but I, I think this one is different because this is our game show. This is our... Uh... We did, in the street. Oh, yeah, 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 we did, yeah. Yeah, that is true. We did this, the game. This is the yeah. first time we're doing it in the studio. We that's did Battle of the Sexes in the streets mm -hmm. and all that, so... Yeah, that's good, that's good. Uh, but again, a couple of the things that we're going to have is uh, exclusively only on the LDM network on Roku TV, so... Or Fire TV. You have to go there to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now... You probably be like, but I seen it on YouTube. Yeah, like three, four months after, maybe. you know, and that's maybe because there are certain things that are not even there yet, mm -hmm. and and it's on thing. But the uh, good thing about it, some of the shows are seen on Roku before it's aired. Yeah, that's so, true. And the yeah. thing about it is, you don't necessarily need a Roku TV to watch things on Roku. You just need the app. Yeah, that's it. So that's all you need. You don't even need the whole go down, you know, and buy the TV. Like, I got to watch LDM, you know. It's nice, but, you know. I'm sure yeah. Roku would appreciate it. But. Yeah, right. <laughs> you yeah. just need to download their app. It's, they got a free network. Yep. And you can watch our, our station for now. But uh, we're going to get to some good topics. Uh, I always got to try to get into the uh, thinking topics type of stuff. But, um, and the videos that I watched. I seen one video, uh, well, a couple of videos, but they're, they're all about the same situation. Okay. And I wanted to talk a little bit about double standards. Uh oh But in a, in a different way. Like, there was a father who broke up with the girl, remember we were talking about last week, because she cheated. Yes. And all the girls were, were attacking him. Oh, but he ha she has kids and everything. And I was sitting there, oh, imagine if it was vice versa. Mm -hmm. And boom, there was a video, vice versa. And they were saying, she's the one that threw the guy out. Oh, that's good for him. He, he should have not cheated, knowing that he got kids and he needs to... Now, it changed. The narrative always changes on that one. He's the one with the kids. He's the one that so-called cheated, and she threw him out the house with his kids. But it was his fault because he cheated. But when it was her, it was, wow, that's messed up. He just threw her out with the kids. But she just threw him out with the kids. Were they his kids or her No, kids? it was his kids. Not her kids? No. Well, then that's different. No, but it was the same thing as, as him oh, throwing he, her he, out. He wasn't their father? No. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the same thing. He threw her out with her kids because she was cheating and they attacked him. Here it is. The girl threw him out for cheating with his own kids 
and they attacked him. They still attacked him. So we get a lot of double standards. Since, do you know a couple of them, like offhand? Like I, I know a few of them that I, that I see so many times, especially with the um, custody battles and all that. But that's totally different. Everyone knows that. You go to the court at 45%, automatically the girl's going to take the kid away from you. So you uh, just... I mean, if you want to take general politics, you can say any disparaging remark about the conservative party with no repercussions. Mm. You say anything about any part of a liberal-based ideology, and now the whole world says you're the devil or Hitler or this or whatever, right? If you don't oh, take yeah. a liberal view on anything, whether it be that you're not pro-trans or you're pro... Even, I mean, you know, if, if, you're, if you're racist, right, and the whole world hates you, and I'm not, I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong, but if you can disparage one group, right, marginalize mm. a group at all, whether it be conservative, liberal, whatever the case may be, then everybody should be able to freely say, as the Constitution would say, what they want to say. You, you get what yeah. I'm saying? And, and, that, and that's not the, the oh, that, that, that's era a big, we live in right now. That's a big double standard in overall. Uh, you know, you phobic of everything because you don't agree with the liberal. Well, that's one. So uh, it was funny because I've been saying this for a very long time. And I finally found a video of somebody else with the same perspective. It's like, why are we labeling stuff phobias, mm -hmm. right, that aren't phobias? I don't know if anyone is aware, but a phobia means that you're afraid of something. Yeah. Right? So why aren't we using some sort of suffix or prefix that suggests that someone is disgusted or dislikes Just say or the, whatever? The truth, right? Right? Mm -hmm. They're not afraid of everything, right? I, when they say the word transphobic, I don't think everyone's afraid of trans, trans uh, gendered people. I think some people just simply do not like them. Some people find them disgusting. But there's got to be a different suspect because to say fear is not. No, like the, people with arachnophobia, that's, that's fear, a fear, right? If, <laughs> if, if someone has transphobic, like you say, as soon as they see one across the street, they start shaking. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like clowns. Right. Like, there's people that can't see clowns. I have uh, fissophobic, you know, from stupid people. I, I'm afraid I'm going to punch them in their face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, I start shaking like, I, soon I, I, I get it. Believe me. I'll be on MTA sometimes being like, ooh, I need to get off this train right now. Oh, God. I'm shaking about my fists. I want to just tear into you. No, but... Uh, but phobic is like that. Like, you, you, there's clowns. There's, there's funny phobics. Two. I seen one that the girl was scared of balloons. Oh yeah, I've seen that one. I didn't know this. And, and don't get me wrong, it's not laughing at the fact that they're it's afraid. Weird. It's just kind of like <laughs> conceptually, what would most people find scary about balloons? Like they, they don't they they don't even move on their own unless we move them. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah, I didn't I didn't read the whole thing. Is it maybe she's afraid of the pop? Well, some, some people are actually afraid of them because of some of the noise they've made, the fact that they, right, right. they find them weird. But, like, each person's reason for the fear is different, and that has to deal with most of the same phobias, right? Like, you get people who are afraid of pools because they almost drowned once. You get people right, right, right. who are afraid of pools because they're literally afraid of water. I know one person's afraid of water because they're actually allergic to it, so, like, they're scared because of the pain that right, it causes. Right. So, like, you know, everybody... But a fear is a fear. Yeah. I don't think some like, of these things like people the person, are afraid of. Uh, the person that's afraid to step out their house. That's a oh, phobia. Agoraphobia. Yes. Go no. That is a fear. Like, that, that, so for some of them, the world just, like, starts to shrink in on them and they mm -hmm. feel like they, some people start losing their breath and gas. That's fear. That, that's a phobia. So, you know, but, you know, back to the double standards, like, when you don't like dumb... You're phobic. Right. But when you tell them something and they don't agree with you. You're just wrong or you're, you're evil. Just wrong. You're it still no. bounces back to you. Like, so ain't you uh, true for phobic? They can, they, can, they can never be wrong. But they, that's true for phobic. I mean. Right? That's a new word. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> they, your language. They scared of the, um, the truth. The tr maybe. Maybe they are. They have fear of the truth. So maybe you true for phobic. I've, I've literally met individuals who you can spit a fact. I mean, if Google it, whatever the case may be, and be like, I feel like that doesn't make any sense. What do you, what do you mean you feel? You can be surprised. Mm -hmm. I would have never known. I would have never guessed. But to be like, I feel like that shouldn't be true. But it is. Mm -hmm. So why are we discussing this point Like I can't, but I can't believe the police car is blue. And you bring them a blue police car. That I doesn't feel like make this sense. Right. No, that that doesn't blue. make no. no sense. You know what I mean? Like, I've I seen this so many times. And... But again, if you do it, it's a double standard. Of course. You can't do it, but they could. Oh, you're so stupid for not realizing that this is the truth. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, and with men and women, there is a lot of double standards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and th- even with the government, if you think about it, there's a lot of double standards. You're, you're old enough to change your, your sex, but you're not old enough to drink. Makes no sense. Or now smoke in certain states. In certain, certain You got to be 18. The, the whole thing is funny. You got to be 18. You, you, you can be 18 to, to die leave. for your country. Right. Think about that. To but die you're not for your country. Old enough to you, drink. But you're not old enough to drink. Now, how are you going to tell me you can send me to war, but I can't even drink to, to decompress? No, no, but catch this one. You're 18, you're old enough to leave your house, but you're not old enough to get your own apartment. Uh, wait, what? Well, you're 18 in some states. You can't get your own apartment. You have to have no, a parent I, co-sign. I'm just literally saying, how does this make any sense? And then, but you're 18, you can get out the house. Is that a setup or what? Is that how we got so many homeless people? Maybe. You know what? Maybe. Like, they thought they could leave the house, and then they figure out, oh, I left in bad terms with my mom and my dad, and they're the only ones that could co-sign for me to get this apartment. But here's the thing, though. Part of that somewhat makes sense, because if you're someone without a credit history or credit report, you can't get an apartment anyway, and most 18-year-olds don't have any of that. Yeah, but if if you're you're old enough, like 25, 30, or something, Oh, I'm sorry, sir, you don't got no credit. Oh, okay, I was just going to pay everything in cash plus two months. Okay, no problem. You know what I'm saying? But if you're 18 and be like, oh, I was going to pay two, three months, well, you still need credit. They, they would not rent it to you because you're still 18. That's, so, that's stupid. Yeah, yeah, but like I said, there's a, so much double standards in the world that it doesn't make a lot of sense. And if it doesn't make sense, I guess it doesn't make dollars. I, I think the ultimate stay-at-home standard is the stay-at-home parent. Like the double standard, stay-at-home parent. Yeah. I mean... Oh, that's... A, that's a, oh, my you, God. You have a stay-at-home mother, and everyone's She's like, God. you're amazing, you're with the children all day, you know, you, you, know you're, you have a real job, right? Mm-hmm. what people say. You got a lot of jobs. You got a lot of hats. Right? Wow. Stay-at-home dad, why aren't you working? Man, you're just lazy. You, you know what I'm you're saying? You're just lazy. You don't want to go to work. Now, here's, here's my point in this. Everything they say about the stay-at-home mother is true. So why wouldn't it be true for the stay-at-home dad? That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to take away nothing from stay-at-home mothers. But why can't the stay-at-home dad get the same credit as a stay-at-home mother? Because I remember before they used to say stay-at-home parent. Because one of them was staying home. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, stay, um, stay-at-home mom. And they didn't even call that back in the 60s. They called it a, a home, homemaker or something like that. Yeah. Right? It was, then now they want to call it staying home mom to make it seem like it's the same thing. You didn't um, change positions. I'm but sorry, the but dad does the same thing. Home. You wash dishes when you're home. If, it's, if a single, and, and the same thing with single um, fathers and mothers. Right. Oh, I'm a single mom. Damn, you do it all by yourself. I'm a single dad. What, your mom is not helping you? Your sisters? They're not just seeing your aunt. Now they're questioning. That's true. They question everything you do, but you never question the single mother. That's true. So these are what we're talking about when we speak about double standards. Why do we need them? And I know there's going to be some people defending that. Oh, because a man needs to be going to work. Well, we didn't say the same thing for the woman. If she's a single mother taking care of her kids by herself, shouldn't she be going to work too? But it's, yeah, the system is... Well, not even that, but okay, you have, you have a, 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 a parent. Mm. Be it the mom or the dad who's pulling in six plus, you know, six figures, right? Maybe 100K, 200K, 300K even, right? Right. That, uh, that should allow for the other parent, the father or the mother, to stay at stay home and home. actually nurture the kid. Like, where that dynamic even comes from is that there should be a parent, a relative, a family a parent, member, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Not as, and it shouldn't be the grandparent. It shouldn't be. If they're there, that's great. That's extra support. That, that yeah, allows for more flexibility. Right. Yeah, they spoil it. But it's supposed to be a parent <laughs> there, even in, even in the stay-at-home mother there, who actually nurtures the child. He's making sure they're learning what they need to do, nurtures that of development when mm-hmm. they're really young before they get into school, is, is able to participate in the uh, parent teacher association. You, you know what I'm saying? The, right. the parent doesn't say mother. Doesn't, it says parent, where they're able to you know, influence and understand and, and know what's going on in the, the community of their child. When, even when they're not around no. 24-7, they're, they're supposed to be that ability. While one person is able to take care of the household financially, that's the thing. The reason why both parents work and come home whatever these days is because you don't have a parent often enough making that you know, 200K, that, 300K yeah. that would hold a, a family of three or four down. 
But if you have a, if let's say mommy's a lawyer mm-hmm. and daddy, you know, dad was working and then decides, hey, I want to be there home. for the baby now that you can't, like you're going back to work and, you know, the kid's only a year or two years old can, you know, whatever. That should be a conversation they have. They come to whatever agreement and nobody judges them for it because mommy's pulling in 300K a year. Yeah. Sending people or getting people out of jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, but even, even that, mom is getting a lot more money. And then the father uh, decides, I'm going to stay home and take care of the kids. What they say? Oh, he's just using her for the money. But if it was vice versa, they'd be like, well, yeah, that's good that she wants to be a mother that's and stay home. That's such a strong home. move for her. You know, it makes yeah, no we, sense. Yeah, we need, we need someone there to be with the kid. Um, then what? That's what the father was doing? Like, the father was doing the same I, thing. I could tell you straight up, if I had the opportunity, I would quickly become a stay-at-home parent because I really would want to be that involved. Like, I don't... My current situation, I couldn't do what you're able to do, right? Where right. you have your kid with you um, because, mm-hmm. you know, you run your own studio. I don't have that at the moment. So, like, if I were to have a kid within the next year or so, and I, it was a girl who was super to, rich, I'd be like, hey, you have to balance I do it with out. the kid? Mm-hmm. You know, I want to have that time with my child. And, and I think you would think that more people would be supportive of a single uh, father nope. or, or stay-at-home father because mm-hmm. they seem to be in awe whenever a father does want to be with their child yeah <laughs> like i know the other day uh um my, my girlfriend her niece was playing with her dad and she was just like oh that's so great and i'm just like isn't that kind of normal yeah. <laughs> right like i don't see you go oh that's so great when your sister's playing with your nope. niece but like you know and that, that's the thing you know and again if you guys have just chimed in we're talking about double standards on overall, but right now we're hitting mothers and fathers and stuff. Uh, and that's one of the double standards. Like, when you see a father with the baby, and he has one baby here, and, and another baby here, and you see him trying to balance and struggle, and, and the baby's crying and doing this, they look at him like, wow, at least, you know, he's there with the kids. You see it vice versa. The mother's doing this, struggling. Oh my gosh, she's struggling. Why the father's not around? For real, though. But you never asked why the mother wasn't around. For real, though. You know what I'm saying? The double standard? Um, and we need to take that out, the double standard out people's mouths and stuff like that. Especially when you, you were speaking, you said um, they, didn't, they don't say the mother. They mean parents, both. Right. That's another thing that we need to take out the mouth. Every time they be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to call your mom. You, you never hear them say, I'm going to call your parent or your mom and dad. You well, know I, mean? I mean. And they, you know. I know in the hood, half of them don't have dads, and you know. So what they say, you know. More, more often than not, the kid who is acting out is probably lacking a father figure. Yeah, and or they don't want you to call their dad because they know what's going to happen. Yeah, the father's going to go straight to just. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they know what's going to happen. Yeah, call my mom. Yeah, her, her number is. If mm-hmm. you can't catch her here, <laughs> you can guess, oh, here's her address. Yeah, the yeah, father is true. more. Whoever's the stronger one in the. Uh, thing. No, but it goes back to assuming that the mother will be home. That's where that goes. Yeah. Yeah, you know. But you know, and again, say parents. If you want to be politically correct or you don't want to assume their genders and things like that, don't assume that they have only a single pa- a parent. Just say parent. Or in these days, don't even assume that they have a mom. They could have two dads. Yep, that's, why, mean, you, that's why you say parent. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> like, hey, get your um, parent in here or either or of your parents. Yeah. Because maybe they're not living together, but you could still bring one of the two. I would just say you're an adult. Yeah. Because some people have legal some, some guardians. Some of them say what, what they say, um, your guardian. Yeah, your guardian. Yeah, so things like that, but not mom or not, not just dad. dad. Unless you know that they just have right. a mom or dad. dad. Then that's different. But uh, you have to keep, the double standards has to stop. Yeah. In, in the sense of, if you can do it, especially now. I don't need a man. I don't need this. Okay, a, a guy. I don't need a woman. Oh, look at him. Why, he think he too good for Wait, wait, didn't you just say you didn't need a man? So why is it he right. don't need a woman now? He's too good or, or uh, screw him and that's why he's single. No, that's why you're still single. So, But at the, at the same time, all right, so we're talking about all these double standards and how, like, yeah, there are limitations, I guess, for the, the father figure in right. a relationship, right? But there are some double standards that still are a female thing, right? Like, um... Yeah, that's what I was going to get into, too. That, uh, like, why is Good for it, the man and not good for the woman. So, so here's one thing, right? Why is it that 
when a guy asks what you have to offer a lot of the time, everyone's first answer, I mean, if you watch all these videos and whatever, it's yeah. just like, can you cook? Can you clean you? Whatever. What if it's that she makes more money than you? What's wrong, what's wrong with that? Right? Why are you assuming that she has to have these household skills? Mm-hmm. Is, is my thing, right? Like, why is that? Well, that's why I think when they say, what do you have to offer? They just probably assume automatically they're thinking cleaning and maybe that's, But that's what I'm saying. Maybe why is that asking, the assumption made? Yeah, why, yeah, he could be like, what you got to offer? Because um, I, I seen one video saying, she said, oh, I need a man to take care of me, you know, to keep my lifestyle. And when she said that, I'm like, if that was really your lifestyle, you will have the money for it. Mm-hmm. You won't need no one to take care of you because that's your lifestyle. So some of the words that you say are, are dumb. Well, that, but that's a whole other thing. Let's say a about. man says that. Yeah, no, there's no way in hell a man can say that I don't want somebody to keep me. In I want coaching. a man to keep take care of me. Yeah, I mean, a, a woman to take care of me now. Yeah, no, there's, there's no way. It's not going to happen. It's, you're going to have, you know, you're going to be on the cross for, for the rest of your life on that. You know, and with the rustiest nails in the world. Oh. <laughs> because they're not going to have it. And it's the same thing with... Uh, if you get an old woman that likes a uh, young man. Oh, yeah, she's a cougar. Is, she's a cougar. She's, uh, but get an old man that likes a young girl. What is he called? Pedophile. What kind of crap is this? With perverts, pedophiles, well, you I know, think, creeps. I think, I think I just saw a meme about that the other day where, um, you know, uh, two 19-year-olds are dating. She leaves the 19-year-old to date a 31-year-old man and goes, I just like to date someone more mature, right? Right. And her friends are just like, go get it, girl. The next image is of... The uh, 31 year old man, uh, like they're, they're meeting years later, and now he's dating like a girl who's like 24 or something. And people are just like, Oh my God, you're such a pedo. I'm just like, But she was, and then, but huh? Yeah. That makes no sense. No, and then the funny part about it is like, you have the old man mm-hmm. and the young girl. The group that would tell this old man, you're a pedophile and everything, would go to that same girl that he's going out with and talking about, yeah, girl, get that money. You get, get that, that money, pay. right. But it's the same couple that you were just talking to, like, but you see it differently. Well, you, so you know... And I think it's also the man. You think about it. If you see a young girl with an old man, what's the first thing that a man would say? He's for the money. He's there for the money. I mean, yeah. Right? But if we see a young, uh, uh, young man with an older woman... You'd be like, dang, boy, you get it. He's in it for the PlayStation. It. Yeah. So it's even then, us. Even no, us, no, we no, see it different. No, but the difference becomes we see it like that, but women will also say, like, oh, she's finally getting somebody who can keep up with her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I, I don't know. I know right now the guy, uh, the actor who plays Steve Rogers is getting a lot of hate right now because I think there's like a 20-year difference between him and his current girlfriend. Oh, wow. And it it wasn't like he's like I, it wasn't like I was looking for her, but I I met her. You know, they didn't know each other years ago, or so he never knew her as a kid. He met her as a full grown adult. She's over twenty one, right. and you know, they <laughs> fell in love with each other. Whatever the case may be, they're both rich and actors in Hollywood, so it's not yeah, for the money. It's not for the money. Um, but there just so happens to be an age gap. Uh, and and then again, this is the difference when you talk about age gaps. A girl would be like, it's just a number. But then when it's to a man, ugh. You know you like his, her grandfather? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But for, if a girl does it, it's just a number. Hey, and love don't got nothing to do with it. You know, like, and this is why we're speaking about double standards. And a lot of y'all would try to use something or use words to um, defend it, but it's not going to work. It's still double standard. And some double standards are okay. But... This one is not. If she's a Kruger, then he should be like a Jaguar or something. I don't know. I don't you know? think he'd be a cat at all. Not a cat, right? Nah. Bulldog. Maybe. Maybe something well, like that. What, what, what kind of dog that's just humps anything? Anyway. Yeah, every, that's what Every dog, dog. humps everything. <laughs> every, just the wrong, wrong, the wrong month and every dog is <laughs> fine, trying to find a leg. And yeah. Hey, we got to get the Scooby Snacks. The lipstick <laughs> pops out and you're just like, <laughs> Especially them small dogs. Yeah. Oh, no. The chihuahua. Then. Yo. There we go. Those little chihuahuas want to do everything. Everything. You know, they bark, Barely bark. stand, but they, <laughs> yeah. they shake. <laughs> but, it, 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 you know, when, you, when it comes to double standard, to me, when I watch it, that's, I think, one of the things that are slowing us down as a human race to, to push so forward in the relationships. and It's all these double standards. Well, my thing is, 
especially so more so in the United States and a lot of other areas because I mean frankly we are one of if not the most liberal countries in the world with a lot of our ideology it's like how is it we can have all these ideas of genderless or multiple gender or you know f gender fluidity if yeah, you will fantasies. right um I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just leave it in, in conceptually right oh, okay. whether, whether you believe in it or not but like we were a country that's supposed to be promoting and supporting gender fluidity how is it you're doing that without also erasing a lot of these long-term ideologies right these double mm -hmm. standards you can't you can't you can no longer have binary standards in a world where you're trying to say we need to accept people who are non-binary. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's true. That, that, that's, that's really where you meet your double negative because if, let's say, you're in Uganda, right, mm -hmm. where now it's a crime to even be gay, we're not even getting into whether you want to be a guy and you were born a female or want to be a girl and you were born a male, we're not even getting into all that, but just simply to be a homosexual which mm. I would even argue is scientifically proven to be natural, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and most species, they're like, no, we'll kill you. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not even though you go to jail, it's you, yep. you die. Now, if they want to say a guy does this and a girl does that, and if we see you doing that, you must be one of those, and so we're going to kill you, and you shouldn't do it, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But in the United States where, you know, and especially in the more affluent areas, the more urban areas, the, the coastal areas, there's a lot more openness and acceptance to different lifestyles, different um, genders, different sexuality, all, you know, in general, right? Um, why isn't there still a destruction or a oh. change in narrative on these gender-based standards? Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it needs to completely, I'm not going to say eradicate or destroy, but it has to be a more fine line you know, towards it, because of the double standards of slowing people down. Being, and some people, um, like fathers, they don't even want to say they're a single father because all the, the backlash that you're going to get from it's a, it's a lot of questions. You know? Like, why are you a single father? Like, did you cheat on her is the first thing anyone's going to yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, that's another double standard, too, that you say that. If a girl breaks up with a man, automatically it's because he cheated. Oh, and a lot of people's heads, yeah. That's, right? that's the first. Either he cheated or he beat her. Yeah. First two but thoughts. But if, if a man breaks up with a female, they, automatically they was like, why, she was too good for you or something like that? They, like, they never go to the cheating. Yeah, that's not the first thought. Most They're not thinking that a guy broke up with a girl because she cheated double on standard. him. Not because he, Not because she beat him either. Yeah. Um, and again, another double standard. You're like, was she too annoying would be yeah. the first thing they say. Come on, you, you, you watch did you find? Did you find another girl? Is oh, another yeah. thing that they would say. Um, Did you go with he the must have been talking to someone else. Mm -hmm. you know, is, a, is a very common thing. Yeah. And you know, and Murray proved the fact already. <laughs> One, I felt so bad for her, but she she tested like fifteen to sixteen different people. Oh, that's, oh that's, the, the the short black girl. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. And no, she, the funny and part about it, the first one that she said, "I never had sex with nobody else." Then fifteen fathers later. <laughs> for real though, which means that these are fifteen guys in at least a two to three weeks span. Man. And then the worst part was that she found out that the father was someone who had got killed mm. while she was testing all these various right. men. And so she had to test the grandmother. Yeah. And I found out. I was like, yo, that's so sad for the kid. Because he could have been a dad at least before whatever took place. Or maybe him being a dad would have taken him out the lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's such a big loss. But, you know, and, you know, speaking about the cheating part, is another double standard where the girl, where the guy was like, yo, I broke up with her because she was cheating. The guy, that his friend. And even friend, still, why did she cheat on you? No, no, but the guy, the, if, like if I was telling you. Yeah. As a man, they would have been like, damn, that's good. You got rid of her. But if I would have told a female friend of mine, yeah, I broke up with her because she caught cheating. Why? What did you do to make her cheat? Yeah. 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 But now, if the girl if, if it'd be like, oh, I'm the cheat. He cheated because he, he no good. He, he, he mm -hmm. had it inside him. Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Nothing to say to the girl, what did you do to make, make him, him cheat? cheat? They won't say that. Another double standard. And, and, uh, yeah. That is, but I will say, in defense, because this, this one actually kind of makes a little sense to me, most guys will cheat 
simply because there's opportunity, right? Right, right. Like, and it's the reason. It's the same reason why I say that a guy can cheat on you and still love you. You have his emotion, but we have two brains, and sometimes we think with the wrong one, right? So mm -hmm. it, you know, it says a lot, and I, I hate the fact that it does, but it says a lot about a guy who can control himself, right? Right. But it'll, it can be purely impulsive. It can be purely caught up in the moment, whatever. And uh, f usually for a guy. Right. Because for, the female does it for emotion. Yeah, th usually there is an, a more an emotional drive. I think that's why people ask because what w was there turmoil in the relationship? Was it an old flame? Was mm -hmm. it someone that she works with? You know, normally there's more of a story than she went to the club, got drunk, and slept with somebody. Mm -hmm. no, normally that is, I mean... There is more to the story. There's more to it. There's a history. There's, there's right. a whole tale. Rather than for a guy, it was just like, yo, I, I, I had too much Henny. <laughs> she, I thought she was hot. I woke up the next mm -hmm. morning and found out it was raw. And like, she reminded me of you, man. She had the same hair. Where I thought it was you because she was light-skinned too. I was like, yeah, no, that's, you know, even your homeboys go like, damn, bro. Like, but, you know, we got you back. You were with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know. That's the difference. Yeah. So in their defense, that's because, I mean, here's the other thing, too. If I know there's a juicy story, I want the whole thing. I like gossip too. Shoot, the, the world star hip hop. You think that was made just yep. for women? <laughs> like, come on. Now. They they always say there's there's his story and then there's her story. You need to get them both. Just don't assume right away, and then you can put two and two together. Usually, the truth like, is the bartender story, though. I'm just they 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 saw it all sober. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go to the bartender. He knows. He knows more. They only know what they thought no, they were doing because right. they were drunk. Yeah. Matter of fact, that was not even the girl he was talking to. Right. <laughs> but she still said, "I'll go home with you." Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it happens. But in in all reality, is like with all the double standards, it's it can slow everyone down. But it's hard to break off the you know the double standard. Yeah. You know, if you see. Uh, educated person in the suburbs. Yeah. He's, oh, wow, that's cool. But now you see an educated person in the ghetto, they just get fabulous. You know? No. But some of them, you can tell they get ghetto fabulous. You know you don't got no money, but you want to act like you got money, and then you want to put your nose up on everybody. That's what ghetto fabulous used to be. Mm -hmm. Now it's just because you sound white or you act educated, you got this business thing. Now you get ghetto fabulous because you don't want to deal with their nonsense. And there, it works for nothing. Now, if you're a man doing that, they don't really say, well, the double standard on this works for the man more than the female. Yeah, it does, because if, you don't really hear about bougie men. No. You don't. They call you, it a bougie female. Yeah, it's a bougie female. And then who calls them bougie females? Usually the other. The other females. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. You know? No, no, I know, I know guys, especially from the hood, would be like, yo, she's Yeah, because they didn't bougie. get no play. That's the only reason. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But she was mad bougie, but, you know, whatever. But, yeah. you know, but that's the thing. If a guy is doing things to, you know, better himself, it'll be um, just normally considered like, a, you know, he's, he's growing up. Yeah. He's maturing, right, is what a lot of people say. He's maturing in the, in the ghetto. So if he's, you know, getting his education or he's getting a better job or he's mm. trying to start his own business, you know, a lot, a lot of people are more supportive of a male doing those things in yeah. the ghetto. And, and I, I in think... Fact, a lot of the gangsters try and keep the guy who has an opportunity to get out, like, out of the yeah. BS if they, if they really about it. But know, I think OGs. it's more because when the guy is moving on up, he doesn't really throw it into people's faces. That too, that too. A he just female, doing stuff. A female would throw in yeah. oh, I got this bag from over there, 300 bucks. And, you know, they were, they were, that's why they call them ghetto fabulous. And that's why a lot of people hate. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, oh, they just hate on me because I got it. Like, no, they don't hate on you because of that. They hate on you because of your mouth. What yeah. you, you know, what's coming out of it. And that's true. I know, I know a lot of people, um, you know, uh, I've, I've gotten a chance to talk to a lot more people from around the way recently with the certain passings, right? Right. And um, they were always just like, yeah, you, you know, you hardly ever around. You're always doing something. Your father would be like, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that, da 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 And I never, I never said anything about it. Mm. So whenever I would be in the hood, I never really had a problem. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, the people that I knew, I'd be like, oh, what's up? Go to the courts, play with people. Yeah. Nobody knew my business. I wasn't throwing in nobody's face type of a situation. So maybe, you they, know. They pretty much knew this is how you right. live. But if you were chilling with them every day in the hood, smoking, and all of a sudden now you don't want to because you want to better your life, they wind up calling you bougie, too classy. Oh, you think you do good for us? You're no too good to us, you know what I mean? That's true. So, and 
those things are what holds us down as yeah. you know as a man a brother a sister you know now we're jumping into what can hold you down basically mm -hmm. and those are things that you know you're hanging out with them all your life you know the then you open up a business yo i open up a business all right cool you know they don't go or if they go, they want a uh, this free time. stuff. They want yeah. this free. Oh, bro, bro, I know you for years. Oh, now all of a sudden you don't know nobody because they don't want to get you something for free. They had to pay for it, you know? Right. So it's like when you asked him last week for $5, he didn't give it to you. But now all of a sudden you want a soda for free. No, he has to pay for that soda. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So there's things there. But if it was a female own, own, uh, that owns a business, let's say a, a store, they don't go up to the female like that and be like, yo, let me get this for free. It's mostly to a man. No, they do. It, I, I don't really I, see I, it, though. I, I see it more so depending on what the product is, right? Oh, okay. Like, okay. If, like if, let's say, a male or female, family even, owns oh, a store. Oh, family is the worst. Or, no, 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 yeah. but I'm saying owns a store. Right. Right? If they have a storefront, people want a discount. Even if they're just selling stuff in the, in the street. But, yo, can I just... Nah. Now, if you have something that's more so like, let's say skincare, right? And you're selling mostly online. This one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Female right? stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but not even just female stuff. Like, because I know guys who do like all natural, holistic stuff. So they make right, their right. own butters, their own oils, and whatever. Because of that, because of what it is, what the product itself is, people are willing to pay whatever price it is. Because mm. you know, you're probably still paying less than it is from, you know, uh, what's that store, Pandora, or whatever the case may yeah. be. Yeah. Right. So like people, so it really depends on what the product is. If we're talking about like, oh, yo, I got a, you know, deli around the corner. People are gonna want to discount free stuff here. Then with third, if your product is something exclusive or something that's, let's say, you know, higher pricing, and you're just selling it as a reasonable price. People will just think they might support because, A, they know you. They'll give it a shot at least. And if your product is actually good, they'll continue paying from you. I know a yeah. lot more people, guys and girls, where when they do skin care, uh, hair care, you know, pretty much beauty stuff. Right, right. right. Um, more so than even T-shirts mm -hmm. or snacks. And I'm not talking just like a deli stuff, but I'm, uh, you know, people who do like Amway, right? Everybody's trying to get a family discount and things like, oh, you know. What I, and that's family like, always. Bro, that's Sometimes mm -mm. I can't, right? Like, you know, I have a wholesale price that I have to make a margin to make a profit, right? If I'm already selling it at the lowest price possible awesome. for everyone. And people don't understand that. I think part of that is a lack of education because they don't teach business to a lot of people. Yeah. They, right? Like, I don't know what they think. Like, we turn off the lights and the little elves and everything come and put product in our store. Yeah. Like, no, we have to pay for those products. And not only that... It's such a, a hater situation where they say, yo, let me get a discount now. Nah. Oh, man, whatever. I'm going to go somewhere else. And now you went somewhere else and paid the whole price or more. Right. Just because you didn't want to pay for them, you know, because they didn't give you that discount. But you went somewhere else and still paid a lot. Same it didn't make no sense. Might as well keep it in your community or in your family and your friends. I mean, yeah, I'd, ra I'd rather pay my money to somebody that I know who's selling what I want, to be honest, mm -hmm. than somebody I don't know. And a lot of the places that I go, they, like, you know, there's a deli by where my girl is. And the guy there, me and him are like this. Like, I, he's always giving me free stuff, too. I don't, I'm never even asking. And, you know, and she try this, you whatever. And, right, right. And because I, I consistently go there. Like, a good, consistent customer is what keeps your business going. So, oh, yeah, your regulars. Yeah. Yep. I mean. You know how many diners have regulars? Yeah. You know what I mean? And they drive, like, far, far just to, to get go. to that one spot. Yeah. And if you don't come, they're going to be like, whoa, what happened to, to Will? Normally, he's here at 12 o'clock. Oh, there he go. He's just you running know, late. You know, you know sometimes I mean? like, that saved people because somebody noticed they weren't there. And then there's a phone call later and somebody mentioned, yeah, he's normally here at this time. And mm -hmm. you're like People really pay attention to you sometimes. Especially in the suburbs. In the suburbs, you have you know, a lot of regulars that they'll travel here and there. And then there's, uh, But again, this, that's an American thing because anywhere out of America, if you open up a business or your family be go. Your family would travel to go there to buy stuff and things like that yeah. because they want to keep it. You know, we have uh, my wife's cousin just opened up chicken spot. a chicken spot. And every day I'll be seeing some of the family members and I know they don't live in that area, but they're there. Mm -hmm. You know, you might as well buy a, a, a thing. They, they live about two hours maybe from us. Mm -hmm. We guarantee when we get there, we're going over there. <laughs> you of know course, what I mean? of course. And we're not going to be like, oh, give me this for free. We're paying for it. Right. 
because we know he has to pay for the chicken. I know they're going to try to force it on us. Here, 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 you know. No, what no one is saying is that if you keep the money in the family, there's more money when the will comes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Hey. I'm just think about it. In the long run, somebody in your bloodline going to get it. Mm-hmm. So you might as well just might put as well it keep it. It's a different kind of bank account. And a lot of businesses do that. Uh, how do you think half of the uh, old businesses from the, what, the 60s and the 50s does something and something son? Yeah. Some, because they kept it in the business. Then they'd be like, oh, who's that? Oh, that's the vice president. But didn't I just see him come out of your house? Yeah, that's mm. also my, my daughter. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. They have all their family members in their no. um, corporation. I mean, if you want to look at it on a larger scale, right, just look at the Jewish community. And I'm not on some Kanye thing about this, but think about it. The Jewish community, a lot of the Muslim businesses. Uh, Asians. Uh, they, uh, what they Indians, do is, like, you know? what, what they do is they buy from each other. Right, mm-hmm. they buy from you know the the baker over there buys from the butcher over there who buys from the you know the cobbler over there, right? And they keep it in the community, right? So the money stays and circulated within the community. So when the community has a project they all want to invest into and stuff like mm-hmm. that, everybody's kind of they're they they're associated with each other. They understand each other. They know you know so it's it's better business, right? But because let's say they have something that's specifically to their community, right? So like kosher stuff. It'll draw business from other areas, from people who are of a similar uh, religious background, mm-hmm. people who are interested in trying a different kind of um, food or, or, you know, religion or stuff like So it, it draws in money from other places, but keeps the money within, you know, their community. And this doesn't mm. necessarily mean they're from the same household, right? But let's can be say, blocked. They can be another town down. Right. But let's say everybody in, um, so, you know, everybody here... Uh, on 149 buys from everybody here on 149 but then people visit 149 now all the money's staying here within 149 mm-hmm. businesses and you're getting business left. from elsewhere right because nobody's going all the way to Manhattan or to Queens or even to Burnside to get their stuff yeah, these are these are streets in New York City people if you don't know <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying like you keep it local to where you're at and if all those businesses can collectively work together buy from each other get the people who live nearby to yeah. stay local because a good community you know, always have money coming in but they don't have money going out right they keep it inside so you know you have your tourists you have your friends you have another town come over um because like when there was a supermarket next to your house the the asian supermarket that we go to i was like an asian supermarket here oh probably nobody knows about it i went i was like oh my god this thing was packed yeah people coming out the train going into because that's the asian uh supermarket that is close by, like the close only to, one. To, to the, yeah, to people in and the they, Bronx. they'll go. Or like us, we go from the Bronx to the uh, Queens, Queens, which is like what two towns over. I say towns in case people are watching and they don't know. But we go is like two towns over because we got to pass Brooklyn and then Queens. No. Oh no, no, I go the other way. My back. Yeah, yeah. they're just right yeah. across the water. Well, if I'm driving, but if you're taking the train, the transit. No, yeah. no, I'll take the bus. I ain't taking no train. Yeah, if you take the train, you gotta go into Brooklyn yeah, to go you, to you Queens. Get to go to, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. But don't, we'll travel 30 to 40 minutes in the car to go to this certain supermarket, and or she goes to a certain um, restaurant. Mm-hmm. And but that's the thing is like if you want to put your money into people, you don't even know them, but they still a community of yours. You right. know that they came here. The Indians, how you think 7-Eleven became popular? Well, you, you want to come over here? Okay. Hey, uh, Will's coming over here. He's going to stay. Um, how much money you got? Why? We're going to open him up a, a 7-Eleven. Sure, yeah. And they opened up for every family and friend. So that's why when people were joking, oh, your brother got that 7-Eleven, sometimes they're like, yeah. yeah. I know. So, like, there's, there's a set of delis in Midtown Manhattan where... They're, two of them are across the street from each other. There's another one up the block from them. And they're all owned by the same family. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. So there's, uh, you know, sometimes a family will come from the Middle East, right, and be like, oh, yeah, we're just checking in on our stores. And you're like, huh? Stores? Because, you know, when you talk amongst the people here from, from you know, working about the hospital, working about the projects, you know, they think everybody's in competition. That money's all going to the same place, and it's yeah. not even here. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. that's that's what they do. I, honestly, that idea, you know, where these families buy the the franchise, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I but wish it, more it, of it, us it came, pulled our money together to do stuff like it that. It came it came so much that the government had to um, bring it down. I guess because some American tried to buy seven uh, seven eleven um, sign, mm-hmm. and they were giving him hard problems. So he went to court, 
And they considered that's in the monopoly then. Yeah. If yeah. you don't want to get, so they had a higher, because they was not even hiring other than their, their family, own family yeah. or their people. Um, we seen it as, oh, that's messed up. They don't want to hire nobody and they in our community. Like how people say, oh, you eating in Chinese restaurants? You know, they don't even um, buy our food from here. They leave and they, yeah. So wouldn't you do the same thing? Learn. Yeah. Learn yeah. from them. They, they do the same thing. They hire their own people. First of all, if you got a Chinese restaurant, you're not going to hire someone that don't understand yeah, Chinese. Chinese. You know what I mean? Well, here's the other thing. That's not all true because you can go to the, the Chinese restaurant and you'll find some Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You, can go to any, you can go to any business that has a kitchen. But they, they the dishes. They the cleaner. It don't matter. They no, do the I'm dishes. I'm talking about for the food. They do the dishes. Yeah. They do the... No, I've seen them cooking. I've seen them do the oh, dishes. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen them do the delivery. See. And then you get the Mexicans who learn the language and just do the talking. And now they work the front too. Like, yeah. don't, don't get it wrong. You, you start learning. Mexicans but, hustle. So you no, go to any the, restaurant, they go and learn whatever they got to learn mm -hmm. and work. But it's true what you say because when I was young, I started working with the Koreans. I started learning their language while they were teaching me it. They winded up giving me a little corner store that I, I can supervise by myself. They would call me and we would talk under... Because it's easier for them to speak their language. Yes. So it's not really the... Um, their race is their language. Yes, yeah, language it's, barrier. It's that more you gotta comfortable break that, for them. Yeah. It's the same thing with the Spanish people. They will, they will hire a Spanish person um, and, uh, because it's better for them. Yeah. Like sometimes when I go to the store and I'm ordering something in English and I see like they the struggle, confusion. I'll go into Spanish and they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then they'll, you know, they'll help you out. They'll feel more comfortable. Yeah, right. And I think that's where it falls at. But we can learn from them if they do it this way. Let's us do it this but, way. But that becomes that that becomes another issue that a lot of um, let's just call them red state people have. It's like, why are they here then? Mm -hmm. Right? If 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 they come with these language barriers, right? And then I have to break your language, but you came to my, my country. country. What sense does that make? No, but they 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 <laughs> they, they learn English, but some of them some don't. Some of them no, they do. They just do like my mom did when she's frustrated and wants you to leave. She don't know English. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the days when they used to come to your house and um, get your bill, and you had to pay your Con Edison and all that from the house, right. you didn't go to them. They come knocking your house. Right. She didn't know the English. <laughs> ¿Qué? Espérate, espérate, Charlie. And I'll be like, uh, she said, and he was like, forget it. We'll just get a translator soon. Okay. Okay, bye. I'll see you later. And yeah, the guy would like, look at her like, what the? <laughs> Meanwhile, that would be the extent of someone's English sometimes. They know how to say hi and how to bye, say hi. Yeah, no, but my mom knew. Because oh, I used, I used to look at her like, you know, my English is broken. No, your, your, yeah. your, your mouth is broken, bro. You know English. So even though you have an accent, you still know English. So don't play yourself. <laughs> but that's how she was, you know, with Con Edison, everybody. And I noticed that sometimes with the Asians. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, again, another, we're going to jump back into the double standard. If you're an Asian and you speak the way we're speaking right now, you're not an Asian then. They'd be like, you sure you're an Asian? That, that, yeah, I've, I've, I heard that so many times. But if you speak with an accent, and they didn't, they, oh yeah, but I'm from Asia. Oh, so you're you're an American guy? Like, okay, you speak American, but automatically I'm going to say Asian. But I speak Asian, and automatically I'm supposed to be an American. But it, I guess it's because of the way you look. I mean, I've definitely had a friend break down to me that there's like, um, in certain countries out in Asia, there's a status thing where like. You're Asian if you're from said country, right. right? Like so, like you know, you'd be really Korean if you're from, if you're born in Korea, but they'll accept you if you're Korean born in America as long as you speak the ang the language. Yeah. But if you're born here and you don't, don't speak, speak the language, you're not Korean. Too, you're not Korean. Right? Same thing with got, Latinos, the, the Puerto Ricans. They'd be like, if you you go over there and talking about, hey, K passes. What? Word. They just look at you like what? Word. Yeah, I'm Puerto Rican too. No, you're not, bro. Say carro, carro. Nope, you didn't roll your R's. You're not Puerto Rican. Get the heck out of here. You know what I mean? You don't even know how to but, roll your R. Yeah, but that, that goes for just, I mean, you can really apply that to almost any, any country. Yeah. Any, any country, like, you know, Nigeria and, or, you know, uh, even, even if you're in, French. In, you know? Even in, in Japan now, it's like they shy away from the, uh, the youngsters if you do not know how to speak their language but here's the or thing, know their culture. Here's the thing about Japan, though. They are so happy if anyone 
anyone speaks Japanese that if you know just a little bit, like I, I know some random words and phrases, and they're very much just like, ah, oh, at least you're trying, right? Yeah, like, yeah. That's what because they're just like. No, I think I think their population. I think so all Asian. If you don't speak to them in their language, if you can't really have a uh, pure. A somewhat conversation mm -hmm. because as soon as you say hello in their language <laughs> and you're like uh wait wait calm down can you speak in this for it can translate for real quick <laughs> like oh man I, I many many languages did it my <laughs> my wife did it she's filipino you know they look a little mexican she said all oh, that to a mexican <laughs> <laughs> she said, after that, I didn't understand one word she said. Because I said, because you said the hello in Spanish without an American accent. Yeah. So they assume. assume that you have to. And what happens to us when we learn hello in any accent? We try to get the accent perfectly. Right. So when we speak hello to them, they, it happened to me when I was learning Korean. The first thing I learned was the hello. And when I said that, they was like, but you said hello so perfectly. Yeah, that's the only thing that I had to say it like four times. Right. That was the word of the day. <laughs> yeah. Because my, my, my friend and uh, the owner of the store used to give me a word of the day. And I had to say it all day. Oh, like no, I had to find oh, a way no, how no, to say it, oh, no, you know? Oh, no, yeah. Oh. You know? And then w once I started speaking it, people were like, you know, and it was fun to always joke around. But like, that's my father. And we, we had a big story. My, the mom passed away in a burning house. Oh, God. And, you know. And the other one was that he came from the Korean War. And oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we, we had. Oh. And he young. Oh. He looked young, right? And people were like, oh, wow, that's so good. We, we had a, Because they always see that. And that's a double standard. If the mother, were, if I do it to a, to a female and be like, that's my mom and everything. They never ask, where's the dad? That's so true. But every time I did it with him, They're so like, what happened to the mom? mom? Yeah. Yeah, that is... Even, even in those languages, they have double standards. Yeah. <laughs> because they're just like, but see, dad going away, you know, he either bad guy, died yeah. in the war. Like, there's a story behind it, but for a mom not to be there, what's, yeah, what's, what's the, the story? story? They just want the gossip. It's going to be good. <laughs> they want the gossip. It's got you know. to be tragic. Was yeah. well, she a crack whore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in some cases, when a female asks the guy, so what happened to the mom? They just want to know if you're single or not. Mm. Like, you know, that's that little, uh, little line in there. That's you know what true. I'm saying? That's true. It, it could happen. It, it, you never know. Because yeah, there are lines. Matter of fact, I think next week we should pick up lines. I don't even have pick up lines. I, I know, but, you know, there's some dumb ones like, back in the days, you know, you must be tired because you've been running all over my mind. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Use the same line on the girl. Right. Are you an bridge? angel? Why? Because it looks like you fell from heaven. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was that? Ugh. My, my wife was like, ugh. <laughs> she about I mean, to that, he said up. they were bad. Oh, I, I, I mean, said bad pickup line. They were bad. <laughs> you know? You know, your feet is oh, tied, oh, all this other oh, stuff that you used oh, to say. What's, the, what's that really, really bad one? Um, if I could rearrange the alphabet, I'd put you, you. and I together. Like, <laughs> what? The you and I together? <laughs> I arranged it out. When I heard that one, I was cracking up. But I think they are so bad that they made the woman's laugh that it made them speak. I think it broke so. The ice. I think I think that's the I think that's the hardest thing about talking to anybody new mm -hmm. is breaking the, the ice. ice. I think that's what those dumb lines, no matter what. The dumbest one, which everyone asks. So what's your sign? Back in the days, it was like, what's your that's sign? Not a, that's not a back of the That's an everyday that's thing. Still, oh, my That's still God. a thing? Oh, that is, the girls will not date you oh, no, that's, off of yeah, your the sign. Yeah, the girls. They, uh, they would be like, uh-uh, I can't. I've been with mm -hmm. too many of those. And da, da, da. What, what, I'm just yeah, like. Yeah, Leo, um, it's Tuesday. Try to see me next week because what, right now they say we can't. What, what <laughs> cracks me up is that they'll see more commonalities within the zodiac signs of the people they date. Rather than the fact that, let's say, you met all of them in the club. <laughs> or maybe, <laughs> maybe they all come from the same project. Uh, maybe the but it fact was that you, days. That you it was keep dating drug dealers. But, you know, maybe hey, it's that right. they're all just Leos. <laughs> right? <laughs> I dated a Leo before. There was two of them that were drug dealers and stuff. <laughs> two out of the five? <laughs> uh, you, you know, I'm just kind of like, do you not see where... <laughs> Okay, you know, all right. Yeah, but if you know funny uh, pickup lines, comment below or send it to us because we'll, we'll talk about it next week. I'm going to try to look for some funny ones. Oh, like God. that. It, it, it was like funny things that I've seen many times, you know, where people like with those pickup lines. Like, no lie, I never did a pickup line until I was um, 
had a bet. You know, the guys always make a bet. Okay. It was me, my boy Kevin, and his cousin sitting on the porch in Allentown, PA. This girl passed by one time. And then, you know, was, yeah, she passed by because she wanted to look at me. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah. So Kevin said, yeah, right. But here she comes. She came back down again. So I was like, yo, she really want to talk to somebody here. And, you know, as a guy, you were like, yeah, it's me, it's me. So Kevin said, I dare you, if she passes by again, you have to stop and talk to her. Thinking she'll never pass by again. again. Of course. I said, man, you didn't say nothing but a thing. Don't worry about it. I got this. I got it. I got it. Um, then we're talking, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes pass. Girl, come, come back. Right. Mm. I seen her. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. I kept talking to his cousin. Why can't look? Ain't that the girl that we were saying? Oh, yeah. Let's go, Charles. Let's go, Charles. So I was like, damn, I'm more challenged. Right, you know what I mean? Like, so the dumbest pickup line that came out of my mouth was like, excuse me, can I take a photo of you? She was like, what for? So it can last me longer. <laughs> Got two dates off of that. <laughs> Use the line against them yeah, because yeah. that's what they say, right? Might as well, right? Yo, she laughed so much. She was like, "You know what? Yeah, okay." <laughs> Kevin and them were like, "No, did way. that shit work?" <laughs> yeah. I said, "I guess I, that's my I'm, first I'm, I'm, ever pickup line, and it worked." See, so, my, like, my whole thing is that I've always I've always been the super geek who like couldn't talk to girls. Mm. So that's why I've never I've never done pickup lines or whatever. Like if a conversation never naturally came about, like even even when um I was doing a lot of online dating, right? I would just say the same thing, be like, "What do you normally do for fun?" Okay. Not even not even hey or whatever. Just what do you normally do for fun. I swear to God, I got way more responses out of that than when I was trying to like be creative and think of think something so. smart to say or like something about myself to seem interesting. I got way more out of just. What do you normally do for fun? That I started going based off their answers. I don't want to respond. You get what I'm saying? Just buy them, a, buy them a hot coffee when they drink drink it. Oh, that wasn't hot. I told you to make it real hot to burn her lips. Excuse me. I'm just joking. And then you yeah. sit there and start talking. Hey, those are lines. But uh, we, no. <laughs> we're going to see y'all next week. Uh, let us know some lines. Like we had a couple of topics to talk about, but this. This one was yeah, so no. good that we just kept on going with it. But uh, we'll see you guys next week. Let us know your retarded pickup lines, especially with the girls. All these pickup lines that guys gave you that swore, you know, with their chest out, with their hairy chest back in the days. You know, boom, boom, bam, it. <laughs> Why does it just seem like an overly hairy pimp in the 70s? <laughs> <laughs> with the big chain. <laughs> But guys, uh, we'll check you out uh, next week. And remember, again, always check us out on uh, LDMnetwork.net or you can check them out on the LDMradio.com slash podcast and see them on XY101 as well. Uh, we'll see you next week. Keep the questions coming and the comments going. Peace. <laughs> I was like, I even forgot we had a couple of things we were going to say. And you had a question and I was like, what the conversation